In order to explain why things are what they are, Aristotle proposed to consider four causes. The material cause, the efficient cause, the formal cause, and the final cause. The material cause refers to the concept of matter, to what things are made of. Let's consider the example of this painting. The material cause is the canvas and the paint. That's what the painting is made of. The efficient cause refers to things that by their activity or their action, their behavior, bring about an effect on something else. So in this case, the efficient cause is the painter and her action of painting that brings about the painting. The formal cause refers to the essence of things, to the forms of things. In this case, the essence of this painting is the landscape that the painting is depicting. And the final cause is the purpose of an agent, what the agent wants to achieve. So in this case would be the idea of the landscape in the mind of the painter. The main cause that was considered later by later philosophers and scientists was the efficient cause. For example, Descartes, he considered that there are general causes and specific causes. And the general cause was, is God. So God generated, generated the matter uh, and motion in the universe, but then it doesn't have a, an activity over the universe. Then there are specific causes, and the specific causes are mechanical and automatic motion of matter. So it needs to be contact between the cause and the effect, and it's like a machine moving its parts. Now, it's very interesting that Descartes had an idea of a mind that was um, indivisible, unified, and with volitive capacities, but the universe was absolutely mechanical. How can he recon reconcile these two ideas? Well, he put the mind outside of the universe, the material world, um, so the mind is immaterial, it's not part of the mechanical world. Thomas Hobbes had the same idea respect, uh, in, in respect to causation. Causation requires the contact of material objects, and there is no action at a distance. Moreover, everything happens by necessity. So every single aspect, every single event in the universe happens because uh, something else happened before, but also it was determined. So basically there, wasn't, there was no possibility that something else had happened. So that's the idea of necessity. Baruch Spinoza proposed that from a cause and effect, an effect necessarily follows. This is the same as, the, as Thomas Hobbes. But he added something that was the, one of the first uh, indications of the idea of counterfactuals. He proposed that if a, determ the, if a determinate cause does not occur, it is impossible that an effect would follow. So basically, it's not only saying that if something happens, then if the cause happens, then the effect will occur. What he's saying is that if what we call a cause doesn't happen, then the effect will not occur. It's impossible. So this is what we call counterfactual. Gottfried Leibniz was against the ideas of uh, Descartes, Hobbes, and Spinoza with respect to the mechanical causal universe. 
He proposed the principle of sufficient reason, which is not different than what the others have proposed. There is nothing without a reason or no effect without a cause. But, as opposed to the others, he said that there are souls, and souls have final causes, aspirations and goals. So this is the return to Aristotle, to the final causes of Aristotle. And he added that bodies act according to efficient causes. So the efficient causes uh, correspond to objects, but they are souls that have final causes, they have goals. And Leibniz had a theory about reality in which it was souls were everywhere. So the, the universe was composed of souls, which he called monads. But we are focusing on, on, on cause here. It is a return to goals in the universe. John Locke was more a, interested not in, in what reality is, but what we can know about reality. And unlike the previous philosophers, he proposed that Causality is not a lawful, necessary connection. He proposed that things have powers, which today we will call more, a term we use more, more uh, uh, frequently is capacities, and they use their powers in specific circumstances. So it's a bit of a bit like uh, Leibniz. He is suggesting that things are not determinate. Things do not occur necessarily, but objects have propensities to act in, in, in specific ways, but they use these propensities or powers or capacities at specific circumstances. So that's quite different than the idea of cause as something necessary. Finally, Newton proposed that there is no universal causation. That's very different than, than the idea of the materialistic philosophers. He proposed that any movement, according to the first law of motion, is an uncaused event. first law of motion says that every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. Now, this is a profound change in what he considers cause. I don't think it's a major change in how Newton conceived reality, but it's in the use of the term cause. So basically, the previous philosophers, the materialistic philosophers, were considering cause as something following natural laws, you know, determined, but Newton put the motion of, of objects that are their natural uh, state outside the idea of causation. So the movement of a planet that is not affected by any other planet or, or any other object, that's not caused. So that's the movement following laws, but that's not what... We don't have to use the word cause to refer to that movement. So he only refer to cause when forces compel bodies to move in a different way than they would have done without them. So that's the, the idea of uh, cause that will be used um, most frequently today. So we refer to cause not as general laws, but to specific situations. So interventions 
that occur at specific time and they produce a change in the behavior of things or events or objects.